Welcome to Employment Law This Week. I'm George Whipple. Election Day 2024 is behind us. From the top to the bottom of the ticket, there are winners and losers. Both parties have called this the most consequential election in recent history, which means that this morning in your workplace, there are some people who are celebrating and some that might feel hurt, disappointed, or maybe even fearful. Epstein Becker Green, Susan Gross Shalinsky, and Mike Farrell are here with tips to help you navigate post election tensions. Employers may have a bunch of unhappy and upset employees on their hands following the outcome of the election. Uh, in this case, the employers may wish to offer the services of their EAP, their Employee Assistance Program, to their upset employees. Employers also may find that their employees are arguing more in the workplace, being inappropriate and rude to one another, or perhaps fighting even, or posting inappropriate things on either their social media, uh, talking via instant messaging, or even by company email. Um, in these circumstances, an employer may need to intervene. I think an employer should step into an employee conflict when you become aware of it. It is the employer's workplace. Uh, you got to actively supervise and, and manage it. And in this environment, I don't think you want to wait until it becomes a violent or loud argument. It becomes one that involves threats or racist remarks or physical confrontation. I would nip it in the nip it in the bud. Purely political speech about candidates, party election is not protected workplace speech. I'd remind employees right away: this is not the appropriate place for that. We need to be civil with each other. We need to focus on what we're doing as work and and nip it in the bud. But employers should stop, think, and maintain compliance before taking any direct action against an employee. Before an employer takes any kind of adverse action against an employee for making a political statement, however, it should be aware that there are a lot of different laws that may come into play. For example, the National Labor Relations Act allows employees, non-manager employees, to make certain statements where they are collectively discussing their terms and conditions of employment. Many states also have what we call off-duty conduct laws, um, which are laws that protect employees when they make statements uh, or engage in activities that are protected by the law. Thanks, Susan and Mike, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.